Danny Healy Ray on behalf of the Rural Independent Group. Thank you very much, Count Corla. Taoiseach is very clear that to many that he lost uh, control of the migration issue. And yet, many, at the same time, many of our own young men and women, boys and girls, are leaving this country to go to Australia, Dubai, Canada and other places because they can't afford, the one thing they can't do is to afford to build a house for themselves or to buy a house or even in Kerry to get planning permission to build a house. Many of our young farmers are deciding not to t take over viable productive farms where a lot of money and sweat and blood has been put into to ensure the, the continuation but these people are deciding, these youngsters are deciding and not prepared to take on the constant vil vilification, demonization and regulations being doled out by your government of Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil and demanded and driven by the Greens and indeed others. Our tourism uh, uh, industry in Killarney and Kerry is suffering because of the influx of migrants which are placed, which are placed in so many of our hotels and guest houses. 36% of our bed nights availability is taken up by asylum seekers and re refugees. Already many small restaurants, cafes, pubs and souvenir shops are closed. I'm canvassing since 1973 and I never met so many people concerned and raising the issue uh, with me about the, the migration issue at, on the doors at this time. You've lost control, they feel that you've lost complete control of the migration, migration issue. Nobody objects to asylum seekers or refugees if they have a genuine case of distress. But who can explain how they salvaged uh, their cats and dogs, if the bombs were raining around them, dropping around them, and, and, and that our taxpayers are paying so much to quarantine uh, these uh, cats and dogs, and, and, and or who will explain how they got time to bring their flashy SUVs and high-powered cars re registered in Ukraine? How did they get time to do that? And. And, and, and how have they, uh, how, uh, they're going home for holidays and for Christmas, uh, going home. And yet we were told their homes were bombed and, and blown out of existence. Nobody here objects to other people from anywhere in the world coming here to work, uh, provided they have the proper visas and whatever they, they need to do that. And, and, and but what they are objecting to, what the people are objecting to is that uh, people uh, being placed in hotels, paid full social welfare and all the benefits and have a good time inside in our hotels. How can he, uh, how can he uh, explain that, Tishuk? That Because that's what's happening. And at the same time, you're hurting our tourism industry you, in Killarney and stop. Kerry. Tishuk, please. Sure where I, I'm not sure where to start there, but um, well, firstly, just in relation to housing supply in, in Kerry, um, I think you were with the Minister for Housing at the opening of a new housing estate in Castle Island uh, very recently, and I think that's one of many examples of real progress being made in relation to housing supply, and I thank you for turning up uh, to report that progress to your constituents uh, in Kerry. It's important you do that. Uh, second point I'd make just in relation to the importance of the hospitality sector and immigrants. I've been to Kerry many times, beautiful county, uh, and I certainly know, as I've been in many of the hospitality facilities, how reliant many of them are uh, on migrants to help staff the tourism and hospitality sector in County Kerry. And I'm sure in your next comments you'd like to acknowledge the very positive contribution of the many migrant workers uh, who work in hotels and cafes and bars and souvenir shops and all of the other uh, wonderful facilities that you've mentioned uh, in the Kingdom, because I think it would be important to do that too. I'm sure you'd also want to acknowledge on the record of this House that there are a number of hotels in Kerry that had been used for Ukrainian accommodation that are no longer being used, including uh, the Dingle Harbour Lodge uh, and the Hotel Killarney. And I'm sure you'd well Welcome uh, that fact uh, as well, because what we're actually seeing here is a conscious effort to try and work with communities, recognising the importance of the tourism sector, recognising the importance of the hospitality sector, to provide facilities uh, back into that use uh, as the situation allows. Look, I know we face a very difficult challenge when it comes to migration. I, I really do, uh, and we're not alone in that. Um, and I, as Taoiseach, uh, intend to take charge of this situation and support ministers right across the government because it is a whole of government issue. 
it's not reliant on any one department. It's reliant on every department looking at what they can do to support the situation. Support a humanitarian situation, support people in need, support in a compassionate way that this country always wants to support. But also to make sure that there are, is a rules-based system, that there is common sense, uh, that our systems are efficient and effective. Because Irish people, I think, are two things. I think they're compassionate and I think they're full of common sense. And I think they want to see a migration policy that does both of those things. So in the four weeks that I've been Taoiseach, we took action in relation to Main Street. We will act in relation to Grand Canal uh, Dock. And very shortly, uh, I want people to know this, that we have listened to some of the concerns. We've listened to the concerns that Irish people, good, decent people across this country are raising, the questions that they're asking. Uh, myself and ministers will respond because we do need a much broader response to migration than just having a conversation about accommodation. Because if we solely have a conversation about accommodation, no matter how much accommodation we provide, accommodation will fill. We have to have a conversation about migration policy in the round. Uh, and I look forward to a number of proposals coming forward uh, from ministers and from government in relation to that in the coming days. So what I say to you, Deputy Healy Ray, is we will continue to work uh, with communities in your county and communities across Ireland. We will continue to try and reduce the reliance on the private sector because we don't want to be in the business of having to rely on facilities badly needed in towns and villages. We want to move away from that approach, away from the emergency and towards a sustained model. And they're very much the proposals that Minister O'Gorman got approval for in terms of his new accommodation framework at Cabinet only a few weeks ago. Thank you, Taoiseach, but it's very clear to me uh, two things. You, you, you're after giving me a lot of water, but uh, the other thing is that you're not in touch with reality and what's happening in Kerry and Killarney. 36% of our bed nights are still taken up by refugees and asylum seekers. That is a fact. Many of our, of our restaurants and, and, and cafes and so forth have closed. There is a problem there. And, and you see, we have to be honest with the people that are paying our taxes. They're paying 44% tax, and they're paying 52% tax, and 4.5% USC uh, charges up on top of that. And this is what's happening. You're hurting the people. And he have lost control, because we have the Minister for Justice who's beside you here today on the one hand saying that she'll send uh, migrants back to the UK. Who have we got to round them up? He, the, the, the Garda Immigration Bureau is not properly resourced. He don't, he's not able to follow him up. And he'll have to take action now because clearly he lost control with places like Killarney and Kerry. And, and, and we see what's happening here in Dublin Thank in the television. Uh, we result. can see enough of that. He lost control completely. Thank and you, he have to come down to carry to seat. And I'm very sure that your local election candidates are getting it in the neck in Kerry because you, I'm being told about it and they know who's responsible for it. He levy him down. Well, I, I will indeed visit Kerry. I regularly visit Kerry and I look forward to doing that again. But, but we Thank you so much. But we do, have to, we do have to acknowledge this, that policy changes have taken place in this country in relation to Ukraine. And we have seen Ukrainian numbers not just decrease, but decrease dramatically. Dramatically. Um, and, and you can see that the, and the figures... The, Let the Taoiseach answer, And I think you really should... You know, cats, dogs, jeeps. Can we, can, we kind of just, can we just rise to a higher level here, if you don't mind? Because we're, we're dealing with a very serious situation. And what people in this country want to know is we're getting to grips with it. They want to know that we're using the various policy levers at our disposal to try and make progress. And what I say to them is, when we look at the Ukrainian situation, they can see that now. In your own county, two hotels that were being used to house Ukrainians, now back, not using that, available for tourism, available for hospitality, available for all that you talked about. That is progress. That is progress. Uh, and we will continue to look at a range. You mentioned the Minister for Justice. Look at the actual decisions the Minister for Justice has taken around faster processing times. It's not a question of rounding people up. It's a question of providing people with clarity when they come to a country. Do you have a right to be here or you don't? If you have a right to be here, you integrate them, you welcome them. If you don't have a right to be here, you ensure they leave. That's the policy the government Thank you, Taoiseach. Deputy Michael McNamara.